I'm Casey Kulik here for the News House, and I'm joined now by Eric Liu, Civic Entrepreneur. So, Eric, welcome to Syracuse. Great to be here. So, I have to ask, you've done so much uh, in your time. What did you want to do as a kid? Did you think you'd ever end up where you are now? Uh, well, as a little kid, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Uh, and then uh, after that, I wanted to be a major league pitcher. Um, and so both of those fell by the wayside when first I got glasses and uh, wasn't going to be a fighter pilot. And uh, uh, when I realized uh, to this day, I still can't throw f uh, faster than 50 miles an hour. So uh, th both those dreams were dashed. What was it like working in the White House, you know, being a speechwriter for President Clinton and, you know, being a policy advisor? Talk a little bit about that experience. Uh, it was it was fantastic. It never got old. I mean, it was often grueling and intense, and um, you know, you, you measure that kind of time in dog years. You know um, how intense it is. Uh, but there's not a second of it I would uh, I would trade. Um, the, the, I did two stints for President Clinton. I was a speechwriter uh, in '93, '94 during his first term, and then I came back toward the end, '99, 2000, as a deputy uh, domestic policy advisor and. Um, those were two very different jobs in two very different times, but each one was such a, um, a, a great uh, experience. For the first speech you had to write, how nervous were you? The first significant speech I ever wrote uh, was such a disaster, I thought it might be my last one. <laughs> uh, I'm not kidding. I was actually, um, uh, it was on a trip to Russia, uh, and the president uh, uh, was giving a, doing a town hall meeting with a group of young Russians, new generation uh, Russians, entrepreneurs and students, and you know, not long after the uh, end of the Cold War, uh, and they were in sort of the CNN equivalent uh, of, of Russia at that time. Uh, and you know, this wasn't a, a very s a big, serious policy speech, and because of the young audience, the, the team thought, oh, well, give it to Eric, he's the kid, and he can relate to the kids. And, uh, and so I wrote this awesome speech, it was great. Uh, it was uh, what, I what I would have said in talking to my peers, right, right. my age peers. Uh, and uh, when uh, about, I don't know, an hour or so before the president was going to go and uh, go and deliver this speech, I got called up to his hotel suite. Uh, and I was a little bit nervous, like, what, what's this about? You know, and I go up there and I walk into the room and he's, you know, putting on his tie, get, finishing getting dressed. Uh, and he kind of ignores me for the first what felt like a long few minutes. I'm just kind of standing there awkwardly. Uh, and then he just motions to me to sit down at this desk, this writing desk. And he sits down at the desk. And of course, it's one of these desks where he's sitting down at the desk and then I'm sitting down at what basically felt like a second grade chair, <laughs> right? Just kind of way low looking up at him. And he takes the text of the speech and he just starts reading it. It's already kind of blown up on big type, ready to deliver. And he's left hand, he takes his pen out and he just starts like marking up, crossing out words. And like every little cross out was like a little knife to me. But then after a few pages, he started crossing out whole paragraphs. And then after a while, he just started putting lines through the entire page. And as, as this was happening, I was basically shrinking and shrinking and thinking, I'm done. Like, there's no way I'm going to make it out of this experience. He hates this speech. And uh, he finally finished, and he looked at me, and he said, it's Eric, right? And I said, yes, Mr. President, <laughs> you know, kind of voice squeaking. Uh, and he showed mercy. He said, this is a good speech. It's just not a speech for me. Uh, and he said, come listen to what I do. Uh, and what he had done is he had salvaged about three or four paragraphs from the speech. Mm -hmm. uh, and we went off to the town meeting and he used those three or four paragraphs kind of like the way a jazz musician would use a chord chart. Like he riffed off of those three or four paragraphs, uh, but then spoke completely in his own voice and his own style. And uh, that was such a great lesson for me, that speech writing is not about writing. It's not about thinking what you think is good. It's about listening and it's about really capturing the voice uh, of the speaker, in this case, the president. You're the founder of an organization called Guiding Lights, correct? So what does this organization do? Well, this organization uh, uh, originated from a book that I wrote uh, in 2005 called Guiding Lights about great transformative mentors, teachers, and leaders from all different walks of life, communities all around the country. Um, and over the years, uh, we created this organization called Guiding Lights Network, and it's evolved in, in its focus from uh, just promoting the art of mentoring to now more broadly promoting the art of citizenship. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to show up and be a pro-social contributing member of a community? And how do we form each other and shape each other and coach each other to be more constructive members uh, of a community? So all of our work now, we've got a big program called Citizen University uh, that's about teaching the art of skillful, effective, creative citizenship. But what can be done to go from being, you know, kind of outside just saying, oh, this is, this is wrong, this is wrong, to actually making a change? It starts peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, it's 
talking to people and listening to people who are, you know, your age or in your life situation. Uh, but the other is start local, right? We live in a time where national politics is so dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only been 20 years since I first came to D.C., uh, but it's unrecognizable to me, the, the environment of what's going on in the Beltway. Uh, and if I were a young person today uh, wanting to get involved in civic and political life, I'm not sure I would go to D.C. Uh, I think actually starting local, uh, you know, for those people who are listening and watching who are part of the SU community or just part of Syracuse uh, more, more broadly, it's about saying, what can I do in the place that I live, in this city, in this town, in this campus? Uh, what is it that I would like to see different or better? So you're, you're a pretty busy guy. Uh, if you have free time, what do you like to do in your free time? Because I'm just curious, because you do so much. So this goes back a bit to what I wanted to be when I grew up. I'm a giant baseball uh, fan, so uh, I'm either watching baseball uh, I'm, I grew up in Poughkeepsie, New York, so I'm, okay. a, I'm still a, a huge Yankee fan. But even when the Yankees aren't on, I'm, I, I watch the Mariners. Heck, when I lived in Boston, I watched the Red Sox. You know, I'll, I just love baseball. Um, the other thing I do is uh, I just read. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, and, uh, Casey. We hope you enjoy your time in Syracuse. Yeah, that's been great already. Thank you. Thank you.